Well, hey guys, it's Matt with 42 Pros, and welcome back to the channel. And today we're continuing on with Final Cut Pro 10, just the basics and getting you a good foundation. And today we're going to talk about how to transform and manipulate your clips as well as add some transitions, okay? Uh, this will, will, will get us into doing a little bit of keyframing and everything. So if you don't know what keyframes are, definitely stick around to the end. But uh, so let's go ahead and get started. We still have those two clips that we had from the previous. Uh, video the previous tutorial on the intro and if you select this one okay and you want to check out the properties of it and the transformations and the crops and all that good stuff then hit command 4 all right that will bring up the inspector window and then we can get into changing a bunch of different things here with the clip itself okay uh, the blend mode we'll get into an opacity we'll get into here in a second but the scale obviously will make it bigger or smaller okay and if you ever do something you need to change it back then hit command z okay so if you scale it up you're like, ah, i don't like that command z or this little arrow right here is the reset okay so if you reset uh everything then poof everything will go back to its its factory default which will be a hundred percent okay so we can move it the clip left and right so if we had multiple clips that we want to stack horizontally or vertically okay then we could uh we could do do that by changing those uh those parameters and then here's the rotation where we can obviously rotate it all right and uh the anchor point we won't get into quite yet okay we'll definitely get into that in later later videos okay so the crop is pretty cool so if you hit and highlight the uh, crop uh, icon there it will show the uh, transformation parameters and, and the borders, okay? So I'm gonna back this out just so you can see a little bit better, okay? So that is the view. So if you put it on fit, it will match everything. So as you change your window size, it will match it and fit that window, okay? But to trim it, you can select these ends, and trim it, okay? All right. Select both of them, all that fun stuff. Okay, so you can crop whatever you need to crop. Okay, now let's go down here to the distort, and you can do the same thing. And this is pretty cool if you want to change the perspective of this clip. Like if you want to add this on top of a wall, or if you want to put a logo on a the side of a house or a barn or something, then you can change the perspective by clicking these uh, anchor, uh, transform points. Okay. And you can see how it looks like it's kind of it's kind of on a wall. All right, you can even get it even even crazier by doing that. Now, if you adjust and you see that yellow line highlight the clip, then that means you are centered. Okay, so let's do this again. So let's get that one up there. See it a highlight. Okay, that will give you to the top edge and the bottom edge. All right, so keep that in mind when you start moving stuff around, okay? Because that will that will definitely come into play when you you start manipulating and using multiple clips in the same window, okay? All right, so we're just going to hit done for right now, okay? And we will reset everything. So transitions. If you look at the top bar of your timeline, all the way over here to the edge, you'll see those two triangles that are kind of coming together. It looks like a a, a very uh, a very sharp infinity sign, <laughs> a very angled infinity sign. Okay. But that is the icon to open and close your transition window. Okay. And you know, there's all kinds of different transitions in here that are, are here by default. So definitely, uh, check those out. Okay. Now, how do we add a transition? We're just going to use this basic dissolve. Okay. Simply put, we click on the transition we want to use, then we drag it over to where the two clips meet and we let go. And voila, we have a cross dissolve onto our clips. Okay, very simple. All right, now if we need to change the duration of those, then let's hit Control D. And if you saw the time code change its color, that's very important. Okay, so let's do that again. So let's select the transition, hit Control D, and voila, 
that is signifying that, hey, now you can change the duration time of the transition. So we're going to change it to two. And there you go. So roughly it takes, I mean, it will take two seconds from the beginning to the end of that transition. So it stretches it out. You know, if, if, a, if the transition is too quick, you can do this. Or if it's too slow, then you can speed it up. Okay. All right. So that's 20 frames. It's pretty quick. All right. So let's do that again. So control D shows 20. And that means 20 frames. And you have to keep in mind on your frame uh, counts of what your project is. So this is a 24 frames per second uh, uh, project. So if I did 24, it's going to change it to 1. Okay. Now if I did 25, it's going to change it to 101. All right. So just be, be mindful of that. And that way you don't get confused if you type in the wrong thing. You're like, oh, it says 107. Okay, just keep that in mind. Your frame rates is how it counts within your project. Okay, so if your project is 24 frames per second, that means a one second uh, transition will be 24 frames. All right. If you like, if you like like this one, you're like, ah, uh, it looks okay, and you you set it in there. Like, yeah, that looks okay, but how do I change it? All right, so you can either delete it and then click and drag another one, or you can do this. Just highlight it, come over here. If you want to change it to the fade to color and you double click. All right, so now we have the fade to color. All right, and again, you can change the color up here. Uh, if you select your transition, it will have a color. And then you can select from the crayons or the color picker here. And you can physically select which color you want to use. Okay, so I selected that orange. There you go. <laughs> pretty, pretty straightforward. But if you don't know where everything's at, it can be confusing and overwhelming. Okay, that's how you can kind of get started with that. Now there's another way you can add the transition initially. Okay, so you can take and click and drag. And it'll, you see how it highlights right there of where it's going to go. Okay. Or if you're over here working on this section of the project and you're like, you know, I need to add a transition, but you have to go over here anyway. So just select the edge of one of those clips, come over here and double click. Voila. You have your cross dissolve or whatever transition you're wanting to use. Okay. Let's do this. Let's come back in. Uh, let's add this little clip, stretch it out a little bit. Let's add this one right here and we'll talk about the blend modes a little bit more. Okay. So the blend mode means how it uh, works with or works on top or beneath uh, another clip. Okay. So if it's on normal, okay, up here at the top, right, if it's on normal, then it will be normal. That means the opacity is 100%. Um, you will see that clip if it's on top. Okay. Now there's many, many different ways to, to add blend modes. Okay. If we select overlay, now we can see both clips. The top one is being overlaid to the one that's below it. Okay. So you, you just, the opacity is a little different, at least how it's, how it's being shown to you, it's not really a, a full opacity change, but it's just a blend mode change of how it uh, is displayed. Okay. All right. So let's change it over to another one, which screen is normally a good one. And you can do some cool um, double exposure work with that. But another way to change how the blend mode works okay, and how the, the clips work uh, with each other is by changing the opacity. Okay. So the lower the opacity, the less you're going to see of that clip that's on top. Okay. It'd be more transparent. Okay. Now the higher the number, the less of the clip that's below it, you will see. Okay. All right, guys. So let's get rid of that clip and let's move into really changing and transforming uh, the clip itself. Okay. So with time lapses, especially 
we can do some cool things with the transform properties, okay? So let's do 115 on the scale, and you see it zooms in, okay? All right, now I'm going to drop this down so we can see those fence posts again, right about there. Okay, so 78. And then I'm going to take and go all the way to the left edge. We should be about 145, 140. Okay, so we'll just do 140, okay? All right, and I'm moving my uh, playhead, there it is, over here to the beginning of the clip, okay? And up here, if you look at these little diamonds, that is what we call keyframes, okay? So I'm going to add a keyframe right here at the beginning of the clip. I'm going to keep this selected. I'm going to go to the end of the transition on the back side of that clip, and then I'm going to change the uh, positioning again. Okay, so if the left edge is roughly at 140, then the right edge will be at minus 40. Okay, so remember, it works off of X, Y axis. So if the left side is on the left of the axis, and that's the positive end, so the right side is going to be the negative side. Okay, so just keep that in mind later on as you start working so you don't get confused. All right, we're going to type in minus 140, hit enter. And as you can see, it added that keyframe automatically. All right. Now, what did it do? Let's watch. Very cool, huh? Very basic, but very cool. It just adds just that little extra to it. And you can do the same thing with scaling. Okay. So let's do playhead there. Let's hit the keyframe for the scale. Let's just do 125. Okay, now let's see what happens here. Very good. So you can see that it kind of zooms in ever so slightly, almost focusing on, on the Milky Way back there in the background. But that's it guys, so transitions and transforming your clips that is the basics of all of that. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did get something out of it, definitely give me that thumbs up and uh, we'll continue on with uh, the basics of all of the, the properties and different capabilities that you have with Final Cut Pro 10. And uh, yeah, there should be a handful more videos coming out to cover all the basics. And then we'll hopefully be able to dive into the more, uh, I guess, more evolved and more, more elaborate setups and systems and with organization and, and roles and all this other fun stuff of, of how you can really get in there and really create some uh, some big time projects and and have a lot of fun doing it so that's it guys till next time get the gear that's right for you because only you can do your projects and since we usually only have one chance to get it right why not do it right and do it once till next time guys we will see you in the next video